This is Push Button Influence, where the world's leading influencers candidly share their exact strategies for maximizing reach, accelerating growth, and generating massive exposure, all by leveraging the power of new media. You can become the next Larry King, Oprah, or Howard Stern. All you need to do is broadcast your brilliance. Push Button Influence teaches you how. Here are your hosts, Alex Mondosian and Steve Olsher. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Push Button Influence with Alex Mondosian and myself, Steve Olsher. And today, we are super excited to welcome the one and only JDB. Should I be actually calling you JDB or John Benson? Or what's the Dana thing? That's a new one by me. Oh, well, this is only because somebody else was had my name on there, so I just threw my middle name in there. <laughs> nice. So we got John Benson on with us, and he will, uh, if you don't know John, you're in for a real treat here. But Alex, as you, uh, as you basically kicked off for us in episode number one, we start with a word. So I'm going to turn it over to you, my man. What is your word of the day? All right. Well, before I get to the word, I want everyone to know that what I'm about to show you is a lie, because this four word sentence is a lie. Why is it a lie? Because it's more than this. Today, we have the $10 billion man. Hmm. And that's old. That's an old figure. Not $6 million. That's chump change. Okay. Yeah. And this is not ring it or rupia. It's US dollars. All right. <laughs> so my word is words. And words create war. Words create love. Words can create a sale. Words can get rid of a sale. How you say a word sometimes can make the difference in a relationship. And how you say the same exact word can cripple a relationship. So John is about words, but not just the written word. That's not enough. He's about the spoken word. And he's also about the visual word using video. And I would call him the father of the video sales letter or VSL. And it's such a common thing now, kind of like I, I developed something early on near the 21st century. And it, when it becomes generic, it's like Kleenex or Band-Aid. It's a brand name, but people use it in everyday language. So VSL is video sales letter. And that's what they use to describe a video sales letter. And some of the great marketers in the world use it. Most people don't know how to do it. And we have with us the guy who originated it. So, Steve, what's your word? Well, my word for the day, and I kind of uh, alluded to this earlier in the green room. So if you're just joining us on the podcast, make sure you pop in early every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific so you can join us in the green room. But my word of the day is persuasion. And uh, you can actually read my chicken scratch today. So that's uh, I think that's uh, I'm making progress on that. But uh, persuasion, because, well, John is the master. Right. And persuasion is. Obviously, as you said, I mean, it can be used in really positive ways. And unfortunately, sometimes it can be used in very negative ways. And for sake of conversation here, uh, I'm thinking that we'll probably focus a little bit more on the positive side of the equation. But who better to talk about persuasive communication, which is really what it's all about in my way of thinking, than what a lot of people would say is the world's best online copywriter, Mr. John Benson himself. So, John, welcome to Push Button Influence. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for the kind words, too. I wish I had a word to say, but I don't. So my word is invisible. Oh, cool. Well, that's what great copywriting is. When you don't make the copy visible and the emotions are the ones that are coming out, right? You don't want to say that's great copy. You want to say, oh my gosh, am I in that much danger? Right. Can I make that much money or can right. I lose that much weight? You want to go straight to the emotion. So my first question is inner game, specific incident. When did you realize, where were you? What happened? Who surrounded you? What, you know, what, where were you in the world when you realized that words were important? You wanted to be a copywriter and you realized. Um. I can answer that because I never wanted to be a copywriter. It was John Carlton. I was giving a talk on video sales letters in front of, I think it was Joe Polish's group, but I can't remember where I was. Carlton was in the room and I kept saying over and over again, look guys, I'm not a copywriter. I'm, a, I'm just a fitness guy that just happened to stumble on something at work for this thing called video sales letters. And I kept saying that for years. And Carlton came up to me afterward and said, you got to stop saying that. You're pissing me off. You are a copywriter. You start owning it. You know, I'm like, well, I never set out to be a copywriter. I never studied copywriting or anything. And it was at that point that I realized, wow, I guess I, I really am. I have to look at 
you know, how successful I, I've been with it, with the letters I'd written at the time. And, and then I got more into studying it more as a craft and probably not to the extent where I should, to be honest with you, because juggling multiple businesses, but um, really where I think the it really hit home for me isn't so much in, is the, the words that I could personally use, but the, how I could teach other people to use these words that were not copywriters, that were just marketers, that were just needing to get the tools and, and tricks that we use uh, to persuade people in an ethical way. So that was really my passion. I would say that's so probably about five years ago when that really dawned on me. Um, but much earlier than that, back in college, I realized the importance of words. I mean, I actually took many communications classes. I was a philosophy major. So I realized the importance of it way back then, <laughs> but not from a not from a marketing point of view until recently, probably about five years ago. Yeah, gotcha. All right. And as the uh, the dogs obviously want to chime in there, and uh, we'll, we'll try to keep them under control a little bit, but that's the beauty of... Uh, of having puppies. So let, let me ask you this. When you talk about a video sales letter, can you just define what that actually is? Because to some people, the term VSL, I mean, it actually doesn't, they may not, it may not even register. They may not even know what that is. So can, in, in your words, can you define what that means? Yeah, it's the most annoying way of buying anything that you've ever bought, probably. But uh, it, it's it's the one thing that people say that, that the most often that uh, I would never watch this. I would never. How does anyone ever buy anything from this? And yet it does billions of dollars a year in revenue. So um, a video sales letter is, in essence, uh, it, it's a glorified PowerPoint file, right? It's, that's what it looks like. Um, but the key to it isn't just to look like a, like a PowerPoint presentation. The key to it when I started doing it was to use specific words and phrases that pulled people into a storyline and a story arc throughout multiple slides and multiple sections of slides. So it's a way, um, how I define it probably more succinctly, is this is a way to get someone to read every word of your sales copy because they have to, either that or they window out. So sales pages are not, people don't read all your sales page because they don't window out. They, they, they can stay on the sales page, buy the product and read only 12% of the words on the sales page. Most of them won't buy the product, but just imagine the same power if you could have them read all of the words on your sales page, assuming it's well written, how much more likely are you to get a sale? How much more likely are you to get emotional involvement from your prospect uh, to relate, to build rapport with them? So that the v, a VSL is a tool to do that in, in its auditory, visual, kinesthetic. It's really uh, the only tool that I know that works on all those levels without getting into the influence of seeing someone in video and to where you start analyzing what the person is rather than what the message is. So Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Alex? Well, the, the big issue with words is if it's just in written form, then you're losing a lot of the market. But if you have written word, which, you know, are books or physical sales copy and, and spoken word, which is audio. And of course, visual word, which is what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. If you have visual, you already have the audio built in mm -hmm. and then you can transcribe it and just edit the mm -hmm. written words. So my question to you is when you're building a, a video sales letter and you're, I know you have a process and you've taught some of the greatest, I'm looking at, you know, Frank Kern, dude, I just logged into your accelerator software, <laughs> you know, yeah. or uh, Ryan Dice. This is what we used to write our in-house VSLs with. John's training is awesome. Andy mm -hmm. Jenkins, Yannick Silver. I mean, it's like the who's who of internet marketing, mm -hmm. but you have a process and you also have a tool. The tool isn't the thing. It's really right. the process. And I know you've told me that across sitting across the table at, at masterminds yeah. and stuff. So Tell everyone, what's the process of starting? You can't teach a full course here, but how do you start a VSL? What's the first thing you do? Um, I think the first thing that anyone should do when starting to write sales copy is to look at, number one, is what you're selling what anyone wants. So this is the one thing that most marketers don't do. They just assume that they know that they've got product X, Y, or Z, and it's what they want. Now, this is not talking to copywriters who are paid to write something. I'm talking to entrepreneurs who have a product. So first of all, make sure your product is resonating. Make sure the name of the product is resonating. Get the ideas from, from your list or from your audience is whether or not they like the name. And then the very next thing that I do is come up with a hook in a, in a position. So um, hooks are one of those things that I think is the most understood, misunderstood thing in copywriting. It, it doesn't have to be really pithy. It could just be a, a way of positioning something. But taking an idea that sounds really normal and that people hear all the time and slightly changing it to where it's it's just sounds a little bit different can make the difference in a, a five figure page and an eight figure page. It's just that big of a difference. So I start whether it's a sales letter, a video sales letter, it doesn't matter what it is. 
that's that's where I start. But if if, and if I go into a video sales letter from there, I literally just follow the five step formula that I created most of the time. So and that goes from a starts with a pattern interrupt and, and going into an introduction. Uh, then that goes into a rapport building section that goes into a story building section that goes into the pitch and then it goes into the close. So it's pretty much formulaic from that point on as far as the structure goes. But inside each of those five sections are like you know multiple mini sections that are very important. So yeah. one start- thing you said. One thing you said, pattern interrupt, mm-hmm. and that, that's where some people say, oh, do I really want to you know, interrupt them? And the answer is yes, because oh, yeah. you got to enter, enter the conversation in their mind, which Robert Collier used to talk about. So why is that pattern interrupt so important, especially in this over-communicated, over-marketed, you know, over-distractive mm-hmm. digital? Uh, it's because when, especially when you're dealing with video, it, when someone hits a page from an ad or from an email, we're in a we're in the YouTube world where people are just used to being entertained and they're used to watching a video and it's this is going to entertain me and to get them out of that mindset of entertainment to education to purchase huge discrepancy there uh, I mean most people are not watching YouTube going I think I might buy that right I, it doesn't happen that often um, on a video sales that it happens to the tune of billions of dollars a year and the reason one of the reasons why is that it doesn't start off like a YouTube video it, at least most of the successful ones don't they start off breaking a pattern meaning that when somebody's coming to your page, they're, uh, let's say you're, you have a video sales that are on weight loss, uh, they're probably expecting you to say, would you like to lose weight? I mean, that's what they're expecting. But if you if you hear something or see something that's completely out of the ordinary or completely not what they're expecting, you've kind of snapped their pattern and they're gonna give you more attention during that first crucial minute. The, the first minute of any sales letter or especially video sales letter is the most important. So if you don't hold them for that first minute, it's it's over, it's, it's, it's game over. So um, that's why it's yeah. so important. Yeah. And so a lot of questions just out of that brief little discussion there. But for those that missed it, can you break down one more time what the core five steps are? Just a just a wee bit slower. Yeah, I went pretty quick on that, didn't I? Um, sorry, guys. <laughs> Do you okay. actually want to know something? God. Yeah, you know. Let me get more comfortable here. So I'm going to actually adjust my chair one second here. Uh, all right. So, OK, so five steps. Um, this, the first, the, the, these five steps are used in virtually every video sales letter out there. Uh, people can call them different things. This is the formula that started the whole thing, and it's been very successful, and it still is. So these are the five steps I use. Uh, uh, step, we're going to step one, and I, I, there are different names for this, by the way, but I'm just going to tell you what these steps are in, in just layman's terms. So step one is where you want to build the pattern interrupt in the introduction. The first minute to two minutes of your video sales letter, you're going to open up with the, something that's going to startle them, something that's going to snap them into attention. I, I just wrote a, um, a video sales letter where we started off with a guy walking really slowly into a guillotine, but he's putting his he's putting his member into a guillotine, and the guillotine comes crashing down. I mean, this is like shocking, right? It's like you just can't help but watch this, and this is obviously for guys. And it was a, it was a it was a video sales letter for erectile dysfunction. So, you know, guys are definitely watching this, right? So uh, that, 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 a, I, I thought was perhaps a, that was going to be a video sales letter for, uh, for like, you know, a, a woman's product, but okay. Good, good to know. Got it. Yeah. It could be a relationship video. Sales letter, <laughs> but, um, or, or, or a divorce one. Let me tell you. Um, so yeah, that, that is a great pattern. So, so that, idea of establishing right off the bat this is this is something you should watch and then you, you you're laying out promises in that for in the first section you're gonna say here's what I'm going to deliver to you if you watch this now I'm making this in a very 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 short what you know span because we don't have a lot of time to go into it uh, but step two is what I call the vital connection and that's where you have to build rapport and this is where I think most sales letters d- dive off the deep end of, of, of going either way way overboard they tell the story that's 20 minutes long and it's it's overly about themselves or they don't tell a story at all and there's no rapport building it's all about benefit of my product benefit benefit scare tactic benefit and without rapport i don't think people uh, especially coming from cold traffic are going to feel comfortable enough to press a buy button they have to really feel that you understand them so i i use this mantra all the time in, in when i teach teach classes in and in the accelerator class when i teach um the concept of if you had to do one thing as a marketer your goal the golden rule is to make your prospect feel completely understood so completely understood. If you can make your prospect feel completely understood, like they're going, wow, this person gets me, completely gets my problem, understands it, you know, has either been there or who has coached many people who have, they get it. Then you're literally 80% there. You're so close to getting a sale. And, um, and John, I, I know that, that like, like, ooh, echo, echo. Yeah. 
Um, but I know that in the first example, that was really great. Obviously, we got the visual on that. But mm. how do you make the prospect feel completely understood? Like it, yeah. you can use either that example or another example. But what would that actually look and sound like? Okay, let me let me just give you an example of uh, like what we're talking about right right here. So one way that you could do this, if we're talking video sales letters, I might say something to the fact of you know I I wasn't always considered somebody that was the top copywriter in the world. In fact, I sucked at copywriting for years. I I struggled to write a letter that converted over half a percent. I was literally just, I, it, I was farming out money to professionals and they couldn't do it well. And, and then you know, I can't, one, one day I just came across this idea to try this one thing or the other. And so I'm building rapport. Yeah. I'm just building rapport. Now, if, if it's a weight loss thing or if it's something more personal, I can build a lot more rapport. I can tell a story like, let me just tell you the story about how this changed my life and why when I figured this out, I decided I would share this with everyone at all costs because it literally changed the lives of me and everyone around me. And that's why you're watching this video right now, but it's a little embarrassing. And it's a, it, so, so I'm, I'm building up, a, I'm building some tension there. I'm, I'm actually engaging people to, to challenge them to watch this. And I've told stories that have been like the most gut wrenching, like mm. kicked in the balls kind of stories. And those are work great when you're selling a product that deals with something very personal. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and wealth could be, so building wealth could be personal. Like you could talk about, you know, I, I lived in a wet rolled up newspaper on the sidewalk, you know, like the Monty Python sket used to say, <laughs> but whatever the case may be, it's like I went from here to there, but it's more, uh, you're, you're talking about the emotions of the story to fill the rapport and you're saying I'm a lot like you here's what I felt can you re relate to what I was feeling mm. and you, you don't say I am a lot like you I'm sure you can relate to this you, you you ask it in questions like does this sound like you can you relate to what I'm saying that's a lot more inviting so this is the whole thing about rapport rapport is about invitation rapport is not about telling and you get a lot of marketers that are very much into telling they're in saying like like you feel this way right now. I, I'm sure you feel this. Well, you don't know what the fuck I feel. Why should you? Yeah. Why should I listen to you? You shouldn't be able to tell me what I feel. Um, so I'm I'm very cautious about saying things like that, and, and more or less saying, "Here's what you may be feeling, or maybe you're feeling this, mm -hmm. or maybe it's none of the above." But you probably feel blank, you know. And that kind of conversation lends itself to building a lot of rapport. And then, of course, you tell your story. If your story, you don't want to start off by saying, look, you know, and this is a huge mistake people make with your poor, you know, uh, hi, I'm Alex Mendocian. I drive 18 Ferraris. I make $10 million a day. Uh, I, I don't know if this is true still, Alex, or not, but so correct me if it isn't. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, you know I, I'm married to four beautiful women and I'm a lot better than you, unless you're Kelly Felix. <laughs> so God bless you. No, because his character, his character does that. Rich Jerk does that on purpose, right? Um, but unless you're the rich jerk, you're, you you do not want to do that. You want to mm -hmm. start off by saying, you know, I wasn't always this successful guy. And, and when I do it in fitness, I, I don't say this is me on the cover of this magazine. And this is me. I started by showing these really terrible pictures of me when I was obese and say, look, this is, it's a lot more relatable to the person yeah. watching. So, yeah. Awesome. You know, it's Alex? interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I want to go to num number three. Number three. I just want everyone I to, to see this because as John is teaching the process, he's actually cementing part two or step two in the process. You're, you're actually getting to hear what step two feels and looks like. And in the process, I'm getting to relate more to him as a result, because some of the things I didn't know about him and I didn't know that's what he was teaching. So he's actually demonstrating it in real time. And you just saw a step two as well as him explaining step two. So there's really two Johns, the one demonstrating it and the one who's actually teaching it. What's step number three? Uh, step number three is what I call the big problem. Um, the big problem is the, the concept that everyone knows that your prospect has a problem, but the goal as a marketer is to make that problem as big and as visceral as humanly possible, much bigger than what your prospect believes. So a, a great example of this is I'll go back to weight loss since this is a fitness thing. I started, I started in fitness. Um, a lot of people think, well, I need to lose 10 pounds or I want to, I want to lose weight for my wedding, or I want to look better for my, my tenure reunion. And I'll take that, and by the end of a five-minute interval of copy, it's like, holy crap, I'm going to lose my wife. I'm going to lose my kids. I'm a terrible parent. I'm going to die early. You know, I, I, my penis is going to fall off. I mean, I, I'm going to make this problem massive, right? And I'm not going to do it through lies. That's the one thing I underscore is all of the copy that I, talk, that, that I write. It, the, 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 I'd say 99% of it with the exception of like using fictitious names or, or things like that, you know, that's different, but the story elements, the, the, uh, the, how bad something can be is all legitimate. And so you don't have to lie and copy. You just make it, you just take the worst case scenario and you say, if you don't lose weight, 
it's one thing to look and it's one thing. Sure. You might feel embarrassed. Sure. You probably feel a lot like I did. Like you don't want to take your, have your picture taken in public that often because you know, you're afraid of what the, the belly might fall out over your belt again, or, you know, you're tired of sucking it in at work. You're tired of that. But it's a lot more than that. Did you realize that that uh, literally having a belly, having just four extra inches on your belly will take decades off your life? Mm. And it's true. Now, how would you feel if what if you're a parent? If you're a parent, that probably scares the crap out of you because you want to grow up. You want to have you could watch your kids grow up and have their kids grow up. You don't want to leave your kids. And all I'm doing is telling the truth. All I'm doing is I'm compelling them with their own core values and telling the truth of how serious this problem really is. And then the the that on samurai sauce is where you take the problem and say, and everything that you've tried so far is equally problematic. Like if you've tried dieting so far, that's actually making the problem even worse. Worse, it's yeah. yo-yoing you, right? So what? Right. So so the solution you found is making it worse, and that's why it's not working. And uh, right. we've called that agitating the problem. Is it different than agitation, or is it something else? It's similar. Yeah, it, it's similar, but it, it's kind of cool in, in a way because you you can anchor. Um, successful things that people hear of that, that are successful. Like you could say, look, if you've tried Weight Watchers or the Atkins site or whatever, and this has let you down, there's a really, there's a good reason for that. It's not that you're not, it's not that you're not disciplined. It's not that you're lazy. The problem is, is those, those diets do blank, fill in the blank, you know, and you tell them why that's the problem. And we figured out something that's worked better than anything I've ever seen before. I'm going to share it with you in a moment. And I'm opening loops throughout the whole thing like I'm just doing. So keep watching. <laughs> so yeah, we, get, we, get we get that. We get that. I'll tell you about and I'll tell you about one thing in a minute, guys. One copy trick in a minute that seriously it can double your conversion. So hang with me. <laughs> that's correct. But, yeah, so, so that's, that's perfect. That's, so that's, we, very small there. Yeah. You. And, and of course, like, you know, if people were waiting for like number, number four, I think was what we're on now in the step, they're like, well, wait a minute. Is this in addition to number four or five? Do I have to wait to the, like right now? I'm like, oh man, I can't wait to, <laughs> to hear what that is. So yeah. let's, let's talk then about, uh, about number four. Uh, number four is you, you have to buy my product to get no, I'm kidding. Uh, number four, <laughs> uh, by the way, this isn't beer. Actually, this is, uh, this is actually stevia sweetened cream soda. Uh, you, whatever you call it to you, make yourself feel better, man. Have at it. wondering if I'm drinking beer on a podcast. Um, but man, this is good stuff. Uh, anyway. Um, so number four is the bigger solution. So your solution has to be bigger than their problem. So the bigger solution section really evolves around three tips. And there are three specific types of tips that I like to give people. So in other words, your video sales letter is educational. So far, they've been told a story. They've been told why it's really scary. There is a solution coming. Um, they've been told your personal story, but now it's time to get down to how, what do you do about it? Well, there are three things you can do about it. And you want to tap on three psychological le levers that, that work really well. One is a, a pain lever of avoidance. It's you must tell them what they need to avoid. If you don't avoid X, this is just going to perpetuate indefinitely. And I like to always use something that people think is a common answer. For example, uh, you want to avoid counting. Ca I'm, these are trite, but bear with me, guys. I'm just coming up with this stuff off the top of my head. Uh, you want to avoid counting calories. You want to avoid counting grams of fat. You want to avoid uh, starvation diets. You avoid something that people think is, oh, I should do this, right? Um, and so you give them a tip and I always like to say, hey, here, a study done in this showed that this, and that's why you really need to avoid that. Now, there's more to it than that. I actually have a whole tip formula that I give people and it opens up little loops within the tip. It's kind of, it's, it's extremely samurai. It's not kind of samurai. It's really samurai. Uh, so that's one of them. Uh, the next one is you want to go to the separate side of the different side of your brain. You want to talk about the emotional reasons why you're going to enjoy something. So I'm going to say, now, here's how you can have fun doing this. We'll give you a tip that makes weight loss a lot more fun blink and for a great example would be like i want you to go out and eat your favorite meal at least every three days hmm. and that's all i find okay the reason why that's going to help you lose weight is blank and then i go into the research for that and the final tip and this is the the the, the key into the, the the fifth and final step is okay now how do you do all this now that you know this you probably got you you probably getting excited about this but Without this final tip, everything else falls apart. It's act is so powerful that you that without this, forget about the other two. And that tip is called blank. And that tip is your USP. It is your hook. It is your primary selling point. So in my case, it might be you've got to stagger your calories. You've got to uh, you've got to have a five step formula for your video sales letter. You've got to do whatever. That's the, the fifth tip. And naturally, I've, to solve that problem, to give that tip, how you do it is the product itself. So, because that tip's too long to explain, I put it all into a product to make it a lot easier for you to digest. Uh, here you go. And, and of course, that's not exactly how you would say that, but you get the general idea. So that's the bigger solution section. The one thing, yeah. John, that I've heard you say so often that um, 
gets someone off the hook and then brings them back in is it's not your fault, but it is your responsibility. Dot, dot, yeah. dot. Mm. And, and yeah. you have these little nuances that are nice little bridges. They're like the mortar between the bricks of the copy. Speak mm -hmm. to that a little bit because those just flow out of you. They melt out of you because it's just natural. But most people don't have that skill and they can learn it over time if they just kind of copy the work, copyright or just actually handwrite the work or even start talking the same way. So give us some examples. Um, that's one of my, you picked out one of my favorites. It, it, the, it's not your fault is four words that are used in almost every successful sales letter and, and they're very powerful. And I felt that was a little disingenuous. Um, so I changed it to, and it's kind of gotten around, you know, this is not your entirely your fault, but now it's entirely your responsibility. Mm. Now, and I know that if you're listening to this, if you're watching this video this far, you are a responsible human being and that you should be applauded for that. You're responsible. You really want to have an answer for this. Well, now you're responsible. <laughs> and it sounds like something would scare people off, but think about the psychology of this. If they're watching to this point, do you really think it's going to scare them off? If you say that within the first minute, it would scare them off. <laughs> you say that within 15 minutes, everybody like, I'm kind of into this. I've kind of invested my time into this. And yeah, I can see how this is. It's not my fault. And there, by the way, there are many, many, many reasons why if I'm using analogies like weight loss, um, poor copy. Um, you can name it, 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 literally I'd challenge anyone to name any, anything, any problem. And I could say, here's why that's not someone's fault entirely. Mm. Um, weight loss is one of the easiest ones. You, you inherited bad genes. You were raised around parents that told you to eat everything on your plate, even when you're not hungry. I mean, I can go down the line here. You know, you didn't know you, you were raised on fast food. You know, you weren't, you weren't able to make nutrition choices when you were six. Right. Um, so there's a lot of reasons why weight loss not being or, or being overweight may not be your fault. But now that you know this stuff, it's become your responsibility and you owe it to yourself. You owe it to your loved ones. You owe it to your children. You owe it to your destiny. Mm. And those four things are things I say, Alex, those are the, those are the, Kind of things you hear a lot. I talk a lot about destiny, creating your greatest destiny in just about every single video sales letter I've ever written. And it works in, in sales letters that are targeted to men and women that really does have a kind of a universal appeal. I think everybody wants to create a legacy. Well, and, and, and Steve, before you go to the next question, what's so cool about it, it's not your fault, but it is your responsibility is if you can hook your product or service into we've made your responsibility even easier. Be right. Because mm. it like accelerator, it turns words into cash. It's your responsibility to make money off your words. If that's the business you're in, you want to feed your family. If you want, you want to be on life support financially, if you want to get out of debt. But mm -hmm. it what makes that super simple is this thing called accelerator and read more. So it, the responsibility mm -hmm. part becomes easier when you give them a tool to do it. And that's how you bind them into the uh, into the product or service. Is that off or is that on? No, nope, it's right on. And you can walk them right into that with, with, with this is your responsibility. We just made, so I like to say another Alex, you asked for, for these kind of lines. Um, one of my favorites is, um, uh, nothing is something effective, but you can, there's many different ways of saying this. Um, uh, whenever you hear the word easy, uh, this is the, the, it causes me to cringe. It's like, it's easy. Well, if it was easy, everyone would do it. And it's kind of insulting their intelligence. And I will, so I'll come out and say, listen, writing a killer sales letter, it's not easy, but isn't the one most wonderful thing you could ask for is for someone that's made it as easy as humanly possible. Hmm. Doesn't that sound fair to you? As easy as it will ever be. And that's what this is. Now that's a true statement. And people are like, wow, that resonates with me. That's true. So I've accelerator is most certainly the easiest way someone can write a video sales letter. So that was, that's an easy, easy statement, but I could say that about any, any, any of the diets I've come up with, I think it's the easiest way for, for you to do it. I think so. So easy, no, the easiest, yes. And so those little plays, those little distinctions are not just cool words. They're also ways to really embed integrity into your message. So, so a few things. So number one, I'm going out to diet like right after this. <laughs> like no doubt about that. We lost John. He'll uh, he'll be joining us back hopefully here in a in a second. But um, uh, it, Alex, I don't know about you. Are you still there, John? I, I hear I'm a right voice. Here. You I, are just. I, don't I, I can see myself. I don't know. Can you guys see? Yeah, <laughs> uh, it'll it'll come back. I'm not seeing it on this, but as long as we can hear you and see you, right. uh, maybe everybody else can. I'm just hearing you right now. But uh, number one, I'm going out and dieting. Like there's no doubt about that. Um, <laughs> number two. 
it's like I'm, I'm thinking, Jesus, do you, you should be like training psychologists and psychiatrists because if I walked in and I got onto one of those like couches and the first thing that the psychiatrist said to me was like, Steve, and I've had a lot of couches like this, but they said, Steve, it's not entirely your fault that you're feeling this way. Like that would have been all I needed to hear. Like that was it. Like <laughs> yeah. my life would have been perfect at that and I could have saved like tens of thousands of dollars in therapy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so speaking of, of uh, just communication, right, and just this whole process, you alluded to sort of changing the way that you communicate just by adding entirely, right? It's not your fault, but it is your responsibility to, right. it's right. not entirely your fault, but it is entirely your responsibility. Yeah. How else, because look, let's be honest here. Most people have seen a video sales letter over the years now. There's more people who look at those and go, okay, I've seen it. I might be a little bit jaded now. Mm -hmm. It's harder to break through. From your perspective as a marketer, how do you believe that communication has changed over the last couple of years? And what should people be thinking about now that maybe even just a couple of years ago they were doing, but they shouldn't be doing now? Does that make sense? Yeah, and I, I keep I get, I've asked that question a lot, especially it, it's usually in tandem with do video sales letters still work? I mean, see, I don't know. Do, do commercials still work? Uh, they've mm -hmm. been around a lot longer, and you know what? The commercials we see are all pretty much the same. I mean, <laughs> they're all pretty much the, and the commercials that work and the ads that work, and it, it, it's all the same psychology. So until human psychology m makes a radical evolution upward, which it doesn't look like it is at all uh, anytime soon. Anybody watching these elections, I, it's gonna be fun, isn't it? It's the psychology yeah. behind this is freaking fascinating to me. Um, but it doesn't look like we're taking huge massive leaps upward in, in, in evolutionary uh, psychology. So until that changes, the same words, the same tactics are gonna work. Same same thing with long form sales pages. They still work because they work. Video sales letters work because they work if they're well written. So the words can be almost identical. I And I come back to this analogy. I'm, I'm not saying, by the way, cut and paste everything. That's not what I'm saying. Um, your message has to be authentic. So what people are resonating with, it's words are important. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I'm a wordsmith. I love words and saying words in the right way and in the right tone, very important. I mean, very important. I mean, j just like, I mean, the silly example of this is, you know, yeah, I love you, you know, or I love you. I mean, it's the same sentence, right? Um, it's how you say it and the words that you choose, right? Uh, very important. However, the integrity behind them is even more important. So people will sense the integrity. So if you say, listen, this isn't your, all your fault, I get it, but this is really now your responsibility. No, I'm trying to be harsh. I'm just trying to be honest with you. That integrity is going to come through. But if they're going, it's not your fault, but now it's your responsibility. And won't you buy my product? This is not going to come through. And people will say, ah, oh, see, the script didn't work here. Hmm. It's not the script. <laughs> it's the integrity of the person behind the script. And we, I, you can't teach integrity. You either have it or you don't, and and hopefully everyone listening has it, and they want you want. So I help you bring it with words, and I help you bring it with vocal intonation uh, studies and things like that inside Accelerator. But but you have to have it. The product has to be good. It has to be good. You have to believe in it at least. The product may be crap, but if you believe in it, and it's it's still going to work, right? I hope it's not crap. Don't get me wrong, but you know you may really believe in this, and if you believe in it, that really comes through. So I don't think it's as much the words changing as it is the intention changing. And so many people, more people are marketers now. So you get a lot of watered down, you know, crappy stuff. And there's still a lot of, there's still a lot of really, you know, samurai copy out there that's that converts because it's very well written and it's selling crappy products, like a pill that cures cancer or something, you know, I can't do anything about that, but, um, but you guys can, <laughs> you guys. Yeah. Can. So. yeah. Totally get that. Alex. Yeah. Uh, John, I want you to, uh, go out and come back in again so we can see your face because right now we for some reason we can't see you steve what do you think um probably the best bet rich ote uh one of the masters of live streaming in the game bro if you can uh, type something in the chat box there in terms of what john needs to do we can hear him uh and if you're joining us on the podcast you're probably going what the heck are you talking about but we can hear john but we cannot see him while we're live here on blab so um probably refresh so just hit the refresh um, and then let's uh, let's see what happens. So let's give it a second or two here. I am but, definitely uh, excited to be seen. So you definitely need to be seen. <laughs> Hold on, one second. Yeah, but Alex, pretty uh, pretty amazing stuff, if you ask me, man. This is yeah, there he yeah. is. Okay, and good. there's John again. Right, so, pretty so, amazing. So here's what's really cool. Okay, now I, I mentioned earlier uh, that you got written word, 
you know, and spoken word and visual word, we lost one third. We lost one third of John. And the reason <laughs> I want to see him, because it's not just the words that matter, but it's the way he's coming across. And if we don't see him, we're losing like a third of, of the whole process of the words that he's evoking. So um, I want to ask you a question in a moment, and I'll, and I'll give you about 30 seconds to think about it, because there are some words that are more powerful than others. Mm -hmm. And historically, historically, now the, the guy who wrote um, How to Win Friends and Influence People, that was originally um, a headline, and then it turned into a book, um, which is Dale Carnegie's book. Mm -hmm. And Carnegie um, may, spelled his name the way he did to be different than Andrew Carnegie, which is a different Carnegie. So there's all this history there. But Vic Schwab is the guy who wrote that headline, and it ended up becoming the title of the book. Mm -hmm. And he did a study on the 10 most influential words of his day, and free wasn't one of them, no. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll show you some really cool words that have uh, doubled and tripled entire sales of industries. And John, uh, I'm giving you time to think about some words so that you're not on the spot. Here's a big one on the back of a shampoo bottle. Repeat. Now, mm -hmm. it used to be rinse and lather. And this seven, this six letter word doubled the business of shampoo. And then some genius, and I think it was from Procter & Gamble, came up with two more words. And these two words were also on the back of the shampoo bottle, and it was used daily. Yeah. You don't have to shampoo your hair daily. In fact, most of my female friends says it dries out your hair. <laughs> you know, but mm. it, it just increased the amount of uh, consumption of shampoo. So for me, you and your, in, in, second, in speaking in second person, is very, very important as, as powerful words. And Vic Schwab, this was over 80 years ago, said those were two powerful words. What are some of the powerful words we use? I don't think free even makes my list. Um, it doesn't make mine either. I, I mean, it's in for opt-ins, it works. For sales letters, not so much. I mean, for bonuses, that kind of thing. But but yeah, so I, I am writing a book. Uh, it's a chapter in a book right now. It's called 10% You. And so my rule is very simple. If you go, go through your sales letter, if you have 7,000 words, you should have 700 of them should be you or your. Hmm. Um, so that's my, that's my goal. And it sounds ridiculous when you look at it. I've taught this for years and it's like, people look at this and go, what the, you've got to be kidding me. And so it, they'll look at some of my sales letters and sure enough, they're like 10, 11, some of them are 12% you. And I can use a sentence where I use the word you four or five times and no one catches it. I'll like, I'll, I'll put the sentence up on the board. I'll go read the sentence. And what's one thing that sticks out in your mind? And very few people will say it, the use of the word you. Um, so especially if I mm. ask them just to read it, read the sentence out line, I say, what, so, so what did that sentence mean to you? No, one's going to say, well, God, it's weird. You used you seven times. It's like hardly anyone notices. Hold Interesting. Anyone notices. So, so you <laughs> obviously very, very important word. Um, other words, I, I personally that I think are very, very powerful as far as like when it comes to like evoking um, rapport is uh, is the word feel. So I use the, I use that quite a bit. So it feels like this and perhaps you're feeling this because in reality, mm -hmm. what people are buying, they're buying in a feeling, they're buying an experience. They're wanting to change a feeling or create an experience. So that's the way I look at sales. Um, and so they want to change a feeling. Usually it's a negative feeling. They went out of pain. Uh, and they want to gain an experience. They want to walk down the street and feel great about their financial life or feel more secure about their, their ability to protect themselves or whatever th the case may be. So those are the two things, a feel and experience. So I use those words a lot because that's what I think psycho psychologically they're wanting to uh, they're wanting to experience. So well, I use the word experiencing. So there you go. You know, you know <laughs> it's interesting. A, B split test, at least from my list over the past five years, free does not work. Zero dollars does. <laughs> oh, know? yeah. Yeah. So, so when I put zero dollars, that gets clicks. And, yeah. you know, same exact copy. Only thing that I changed was zero dollars versus free. Mm. And, and and zero dollars doesn't get picked up by the spam filters as well. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting, isn't it? Sometimes it's not even a word. It's a symbol. Yeah, it's a great. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, John, let me ask you this, man, because the reality is there's going to be some people out there who are going to kind of look at this as a slippery slope, mm -hmm. right? They're going to feel that it's manipulative and you're preying on people's emotions. Talk about how you view the difference between persuasive marketing and manipulative marketing, or are we just talking semantics? Oh my gosh, yeah, it's no, it's not semantics. Okay, so uh, it's very, let me just put it this way. Manipulation is coercion. 
Uh, persuasion is compelling. That's the big difference. Um, can you just a picture this picture the scenario? Uh, your your son, his room is on fire, but he doesn't know it. So you knock on the door. Uh, excuse me, uh, Matt. Um, I'm, I know you're busy. I know you're probably watching. It's all. I'll, I'll, I'll come back. I'll come back. No, you know. So you come back, Matt, Matt. I'm sorry. I, I know you're really busy, and I, I, I'm, I just you. You may want to look at this. Maybe not. Maybe not. Um, your, your room's on fire. It, it, it's it's <laughs> might be important to you. Maybe not. I don't want to pressure you. I don't want to. I don't want to manipulate you to get out of the room, even though that's really what I want for you. And getting out of the room would save my son. That's very important to me. But you know. <laughs> so how would you get your son out of a burning house? Mm. Right. Okay. It, now, now picture if you couldn't pick him up and carry him, what words would you use to get your child out of a burning house? And, and I, can you just picture this? You get your child out of a burning house and afterwards your, your wife or your brother or the fireman goes, man, you manipulated bastard. You just manipulated him to get out of that room. Yeah. It's for his own freaking good. And that it, under that underlines everything. Is it for your own freaking good? So if I have something for sale that is for your own good, it is a diet book that works. It is a fitness. It is a self-defense program that works. It is a sales letter course that works. It's my new book coming out this year is a relationship course that's very, very controversial, but works. <laughs> um, is this going to be for your own good? Yes, it is for your own good. I totally believe that with 100% of my being. So I'm going to use every ethical means necessary, which means I'm going to tap into the emotional centers of your brain because that's how you make a decision. And until that changes, having conversations like I fictitiously had with, the, with your child in a, in a burning room is just downright stupid. In fact, I'm going to go one step further. I don't know how many hands I'm going to get for this, but I'm going to say this. You're an unethical bastard. If you don't do what I'm talking about, if you don't mm. sell with everything that you have, you either don't believe in your product, so you're an unethical bastard, or you don't want people to be successful, so you're an unethical bastard. Which one is it? You know, I, I really love this because I talk at a lot of like I, I hear lately a lot of the, my friends are in kind of a when I say new age, not really new age, but more of a like you know conscious driven professional uh, group. You know, Eb and, and those guys. You know, Alex and and so you know, I speak at those. I speak copywriting of those those things. And, and, and event, you know, eventually this happens. You know, one of the beta males in the audience is like, uh, Mr. Benson, uh, that sounds really manipulative to me. And, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, really? Uh, it sounds manipulative to you, huh? Well, okay. <laughs> I see. Well, you're not going to survive very long in the business world now, are you? Maybe you should consider changing jobs because the mm. bottom line here is people want to be manipulated if that word is redefined as compelled to do something that's good for them. <laughs> because I, I, you know, I have a personal trainer. I know tons about fitness. I know I wrote books about fitness. I have a personal trainer. Why? It manipulates me to go to the freaking gym. Maybe it's it's a it's one of the greatest self manipulating tools I know. Right? I don't think of Clark as being a manipulator. Um, so I can get on a soapbox about this one. No, you owe it to your fans. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to everyone that you're making products for to sell with the best of your ability. And if you're not willing to do that, then get out of this business. You don't, you don't want to, you shouldn't be in this business. You should be in another business and nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Knock yeah. yourself out, but you shouldn't yeah. be in sales. All right. Really, really, really good stuff, man. So gosh, Alex, can you, it's like, a, it's almost a quarter till already. Unreal. Well, let's, let's take us. Let's take ourselves out and then we'll go back into the green room, right? Okay. And so the question is prediction. Mm -hmm. um, the past doesn't equal the future, as Tony Robbins has said over the years since 1980. <laughs> but the past does help predict the future. Mm -hmm. And so um, what do you think the future is for VSLs and the way copy and words will be used on? For VSLs, every time I think it's going to change and be more X, it then somebody comes out with an all slides VSL that makes ten million dollars a week. So I don't know. <laughs> it's like I'm like it's like man. Every time I think that the something's got to change, um, I, I I just I keep coming back down to it's not the medium, it's the message, and it's the intent behind the message that's evolving. And I think that's going to evolve further. The more people get online, we know that billions of people are coming online in the next five or six years. Um, the more that that happens, there's going to be the newbies out there that will fall for everything. But the more educated consumers that have been on the internet 15, 20 years, um, those are the guys and girls that are going to go, wait, no, I'm looking for the truth. And I, it doesn't matter how it's presented. Now, some people will have a knee jerk reaction to a long form sales. Oh, I've seen this before. Or it's video sales letter. Oh, it's one of those ugly video sales letters. But 
who cares about those guys? Uh, there's too many other guys to care about, right? You cannot care about people you can't reach. You can only care about those that you can. So for those that you can, reach them with every medium possible. And eventually, I think that's going to end up driving to a video sales letter or a sales page. But blog posts, audios, what we're doing here is reaching people in, in different mediums. And then they'll go, wait, next time I see that John guy on a video sales letter, I might listen to him because now I know more of his intention. And that's the underscore word that I would like to use is intention. What is your intention as a marketer, as a business owner? Is it really to make your life and other lives better. I don't, I'm not Pollyanna. I'm not one of these guys. And I'm all about business just to make everyone's life better. No, I've got a family. I got a life. I would like to make my own life better as well. And that is the beauty of being an egalitarian. I think everyone should be. So I'm like, yeah, let's go for the equality. Let's make everybody's lives better. But in, in order to do that, I need to be a little bit persuasive. I need to go, guys, come on, wake up. Here's why you should wake up. You're going to die if you don't. Okay. Mm. That's not manipulation. That's the fucking truth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. excuse me if I throw down an F-bomb here, but if I'm going to tell the <laughs> truth, which I'm emphatically committed to doing, sometimes it's going to come across as a little bit harsh. Yeah, Steve, all what, good, what's man. What's your project, pr uh, prediction on that? Uh, because uh, that's interesting to hear, uh, Johns. What's your prediction? What's the future of the VSL look like? I mean, from my perspective, the God's honest truth is given that so many people don't get it right, and need this sort of guidance. I believe that there are still literally millions of sales pages and video sales letters out there that are really, really just underperforming, right? And so the answer is, I believe that the future like John is still very much ahead of us in terms of the power of video sales letters because we're getting clearer on exactly what it should be and how it should work. So from my perspective, I, I think that they're only gonna get better and more effective. Yeah, for me, um, John's first step, uh, he called it the pattern interrupt. Um, he also calls it the snap suggestion, you know, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, this is what I've tested. I, I think most people don't know how to create a video sales letter and just like writing a great, great headline, it's in their 2000th line. And so mm -hmm. people never get that far. So what I have tested, and this is really interesting because, John, we haven't even talked about it. But recently, just like what, what sells a movie, a trailer. Mm -hmm. So doing like a two to three minute trailer with the best of the video sales letter and get them to opt in to watch the video sales letter. That has seemed to start working for me. So totally. um, I don't know if it'll work or not, mm -hmm. but I do know if you're not good at that first pattern interrupt, then why not give them the best of the best? And if they don't like the two minutes you're screwed for the rest of it. So, you know, it's a good opt-in. It's a good bribe. Yeah, totally. Even if it's not an opt-in too, because we, we've tested that like a, a pre-video landing page. I call it, I'd call it a trailer too. And, and it's literally just a minute or two minutes. And it's like, you know, click, click now to watch below. And, and you can test an opt-in say, you know, enter your email or no thanks, but you risk losing that person, but test it both ways. But yeah, that's, that's a great idea. So that's a future of uh, landing pages. You know, the article landers worked really, really well. So you go to an article page and click here to watch the video. That's, that's worked for years. Um, that didn't exist when, you know, VSLs first came out. And of course, surveys, right? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people doing questions and surveys now on Facebook and, and because Facebook mandates it and then it goes to a video sales letter that works. But all of that is, is really building a little bit of rapport, a little bit of knowledge. But I love that. I love the, the, uh, uh, the trailer. I think that's a really, really cool thing. Yep. Awesome. So let, let's do this. We're going to wrap the podcast version here of Push Button Influence. But before we do that, and then we get to everybody's questions in the green room, which is exactly why you should join us on Blab.im every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific so that you can participate and get the benefit of the Q&A session. John, how do people find out more information about you? Where's the best place they should go? Um, so you tell me... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the best place to get about me. I, it's funny. I'm pretty freaking stealth. Um, I'm I'm hard to find on, online. And uh, and so I've, Celerator, right? I mean, go ahead. You yeah, can say it. Celerator, yeah, in s e l l e r a t o r dot com. Uh, that is the that is the that's the Lamborghini of courses out there for sure. Uh, but that's the best way to get in touch with the course. Um, to get in touch with me, I'm, I'm kind of off social media. I do have Facebook pages, but not, I'm not on it that much. But uh, that's the best way to get in touch with the course. 
Uh, in 2016, I'm going to be a lot more present on social media. That's one of the things I'm doing a lot more of. So just stay tuned. My johnbenson.com site will be actually a one that works. <laughs> it, won't have, it, won't have, it won't have pictures of my ex-wife on on there. I just I haven't. This is, I, what is it? The the, 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 uh, the shoemaker sons have no shoes. What is the mm -hmm. saying there? The mm -hmm. Yeah, this is completely true. It's like, uh, yeah, I'm so busy building other everybody else's stuff. I have <laughs> um, But there is a new website coming out in a couple of weeks. I can't say the name of it because if, if I do, you'll go there and I, and I want that to happen yet. But let's put it this way. It's, it is the authority site for anyone publishing anything digitally. So mm. if you want a book, an ebook, an audio, a video, if you publish anything digitally, it's going to be at the A to Z, including Accelerator and how to sell it. So that's, awesome. that's the big thing in 2016. Awesome. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to wrap again the podcast version here of Push Button Influence. And man, I got to tell you, Alex Mandosian, how uh, how amazing was John Benson, huh? Well, I, I kind of knew he would be, but uh, I'm glad <laughs> everyone else got the, the sense of it. And there's so much more. And if we can do anything to uh, push forth this uh, new media push for you. We'll have you back on the show later on in the year, John. Oh, thank you guys. Really appreciate yep. it. This is a blast being here. I hope I didn't like cause you to have censorship problems, but um... no, no, you're all good, man. So everybody stick around here because we're going to go into the green room and answer everyone's questions here on push button influence. So on behalf of myself, Steve Olsher, and for Alex Mandosian and the one and only John Benson, really do appreciate you joining us live here on Blab. We're going to go into the green room to answer some Q&A after this exit music. <laughs> you just learned how to broadcast your brilliance. Tune in live to Blab.im, Wednesdays at 4 p.m. Pacific, as the world's leading influencers share their proven strategies for leveraging the power of new media. For more information about your hosts, Alex Mandoshian and Steve Olsher, to claim your free surprise gift, and to access every episode of Push Button Influence, visit PushButtonInfluence.com.